July 17, 1981. That's Stacy Smith on the scene of one of the biggest breaking news stories in Kansas City's history. Two walkways collapsed at the Hyatt Regency Hotel, killing 114 people and injuring more than 200 others. Stacy was there, covering it for his then station, WDAF TV. Today, we continue our three day celebration of Stacy's incredible 50 year career, with 38 of those years here at KDKA. During his career, Stacy has covered countless breaking news stories. And while they're all important, it's the major tragedies that are still vividly seared into his memory. Here's Ken Rice with the second part of KDK's farewell to Stacy Smith. September 8, 1994, U.S. Air Flight 427 crashes in Hopewell Township on approach to Pittsburgh International Airport. Stacy had been at KDKA for 11 years at that point. We had just finished the 6 o'clock newscast, and uh, I had just walked off the set, and somebody had said to me, there's talk of a plane crash. And I said, well, you hear a plane crash, you're, you're thinking it's a small little sure. plane that is, is a crash. Mm -hmm. And then we get word that, no, this is probably one, it's a, it's a jet, it's a commercial jetliner. And so at that point, um, Connie Chung was filling in for Dan Rather that night anchoring the CBS Evening News. And something that you, you just don't do is, is interrupt the national newscast I mean, with a local breaking story. You just, you just don't do it. We did it. You guys were being carried, not just in Pittsburgh, but nationally. We have crews at the scene, but as you can imagine, with a tragedy such as this, with 126 people on board this flight, the Philadelphia-based crew, that uh, uh, it is uh, extremely difficult for our news crews to be able to get to the scene. We had had several phone calls and people were describing how the plane was coming in and it rolled over like this and went down. But these are eyewitnesses. You don't, not, you don't discount what the eyewitness says, but you always want to wait and get more of an official word as to what's happening. Our executive producer at the time, Jocelyn Howe, I'm, I'm in the newsroom set and she could walk all the way over to this side uh, and not be seen. And Jocelyn went like this to me, so I'm on by myself. And, and I looked over at her and she said, she mouthed, the words. And I looked back at the camera and I said, uh, just one moment, please. And I said, are you absolutely sure? And she said, yes. I still get choked up. Um, I turned back to the camera and took a breath and I said, there are no survivors. Now, the reason I get choked up over that and, and it's emotional is because as you well know, sitting on the anchor desk, people are watching you, they're listening to you, and they want to believe what you're saying. And if you're going to say that there are no survivors, in the back of your mind you also know that there are relatives, there are friends, there are acquaintances of the people who are on that flight. and. They're not getting any information yet from any place else, so they've tuned into television to watch. And you're the one who's telling them that all those people died. I, I take great responsibility in, in making sure that if I'm going to say that, that it's right. 132 people lost their lives that night. And 20 years after the crash, Stacy learned that his gut instinct about being the one to deliver the news to some of their loved ones was right. I was invited to speak to the survivors group, and I told that story, and there were about three or four people who mouthed the words, there are no survivors, as I said it, and then came up to me and said, that's how I learned. September 11th, 2001, the attack on America. Nearly 3,000 killed, more than 6,000 injured in New York, at the Pentagon, and here in our backyard. And here locally, a United Airlines flight, number 93, from Newark, New Jersey, to San Francisco, has crashed in Somerset County. As I got up, I was listening to the radio, and there was a report that a plane had crashed into one of the towers like I think just about everybody, well, again, a small plane had crashed in. And then the report started coming in that was probably larger than that. And you think, wow, something went wrong with the guidance system or, or whatever it might be. And by the time I was dressed, uh, you know, the other plane had, had gone in into it and uh, I just came into work. I mean, that's just, that situation, you, that's what you do. It turned out to be a very long day. 
October 27th, 2018, a man opens fire at the Tree of Life Synagogue in Squirrel Hill, killing 11, wounding six. Someone uh, texted me and said, are you going into the station? And why would I go to the state? I mean, I didn't have a radio on, didn't have a TV on, I had no idea. Stacy later joined me and most of the rest of our news team as we provided coverage for more than 10 hours that day. It was, a phen I think, a phenomenal gathering, almost spur of the moment kind of thing mm -hmm. after the shooting took place. The loss of 11 lives, several people critically wounded, others uh, recovering from their wounds. Someone had asked me about which one of these stories stand out, and, and you've covered enough of them as well. They're, they're grouped into tragedy stories, and not a single one stands out over and above another one. But this one was, was unnerving because it was not a, an accident or, or something, a malfeasance by somebody. This was a deliberate uh, attack on somebody. I've always marveled at your ability to, I don't know how you do it, because it certainly gets to me when I'm out there, uh, but you seem to have just a, a command, uh, a calm that you are able to project that nobody would ever guess what's going on in your ear as well as within your field of vision that the viewers can't see. Um, how do you describe that ability to do that? I can't. I don't know. It's, it's just part of me, I guess. I don't take chances on a lot of things. I know what my limitations are. It doesn't say that I don't test those limitations sometimes but I'm not going to sit out here and, and go with something that I'm not sure of what it is. This job, people ask me, how do you, how do, you do it? How do you, every day, you're, you're sitting in that chair and you're talking about terrible things. And, uh, and yet you seem like you're a fairly, <laughs> you seem like you're a fairly normal person. How did you deal with that uh, after all these years? I think you set up a wall. I think it's similar to what uh, police officers do and firefighters who see tragedy, uh, that, that you set up a wall that you, you try not to let it uh, come in and affect you personally. But I think you will agree that there are times you do walk away from here and you start to reflect and it's, it's, it, it can, you can let some emotions out at, at some other times. The thing I've always tried to remember, Ken, is that, is that even that car accident, that's somebody. That's somebody's life. That, that's somebody's um, relative who just lost, you know, a loved one. Wow, remarkable memories. I mean, stories that impacted Pittsburgh and the world and you. Yeah, oh, it does. It, it affects us out here it at does. the anchor desk. And it's, it's just, uh, as I say, you have to, sometimes you have to put up a wall. There are so many other breaking news stories we covered here through the years, too. The Ashland oil spill back in the, uh, mm. uh, the 80s, which went down the Ohio River. We, uh, the tornadoes in 1985 sure. were, were huge stories as well. The bomb hammer shooting, so many stories. And that's why I say you can't really pick one out over the other. Yeah, well, and you are a consummate storyteller. Well, thank you. Thank you.